elections. I can't remember for the last election, but the election before, I think it was 70, 73 or 74, 76 percent or something like this. Um, um, committees for the Defence of the Revolution, um, demanded, um, which um, uphold democratic control of um, voluntary work, um, create social events, um, lead campaigns for recycling, um, things like this. Um, there's voluntary union, unionism, um, and the unions are independent of the state, um, and for those there are open elections of representation, over 90% unionised, and they have monthly workers assemblies, committees within workplaces, and things like this. Um, and so members and non-members can make decisions about ways in which workplaces are run. So that's the kind of democracy that we do not see any glimpse of really in, in capitalist society. Like within the workplace, there may be um, elements of democracy, not necessarily, well, I wouldn't actually say democracy, I'd say there's no democracy, but there are elements of letting workers make decisions or supervisory levels or whatever it is. But usually those are, you know, with, with, with the view of obtaining more products, mining the workers' heads, etc., because um, workers know how to do jobs better, but there's actually no democratic planning of. Um, you know, how, how work is organised. Um, in 2002, there, were, there was a, you know, a large number of sugar redundancies. I think it was something like, I don't know, somebody else might know, but I think it was something like two-thirds of the sugar industry was basically kind of um, eventually wiped out, which was a process which they were probably holding off um, <coughs> for quite a while. But, um, but you know, there were you know, a million workers participating in assemblies, democratic decisions about further education, um, movement into other, sec um, other sectors of industry and all this kind of thing. And it's, um, you know, democratic planning and that's just not the kind of experience that workers have in capitalist society uh, at all. Um, and within local government um, level, um, universal suffrage for anybody who is um, 16 years and over and that's like a demand that a lot of socialist organisations have in the in bourgeois countries. Just touching on this um, this aspect quite quickly is that basically this is kind of a question of propaganda, a question of Western propaganda about what socialism is, um, and are able to draw on negative examples of how revolutions have developed or or failed. And so often we get, um, you know, obvious to all of us is that there's massive propaganda um, against the experience of socialism. Um, and usually there's a focus around Russia, China and Cuba. Um, what this does is kind of um, eliminate, the, eliminate any discussion or, you know, popular knowledge around failed revolutions um, that, are, that have um, taken place. Um, that haven't been successful. Um, so we've got you know, Germany 1918 to 1919 um, as a result of, 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 of the war, um, the massive revolutionary movement which was um, put down. Um, Spain 1936 to 1939, um, the defense of the Republic in the Civil War. Indonesia, 1940s to 1966, Indonesia had the largest um, communist party in the um, non-communist world, I think, to my knowledge. And so, um, you know, very significant, sizable um, revolutionary or um, communist or socialist parties throughout the world. France, 1968, which is an example that we, um, that we can that we often uphold as um, the experience of um, trying to progress a, re um, a revolutionary situation in an industrialized setting. Um, Peru, um, 1980 to the mid 1990s, um, you know, basically um, a revolutionary party having hold of more than two thirds of, 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 of the country. Um, various reasons for um, failures of some of these movements. But um, outside of these very, very strong examples, there have also, also been very important movements which have drawn on Marxist theory. So one example, like within the heart of imperialism, 
would be the Black Panther Party for um, the self-defense. And basically, that was a very, very um, strong movement for black civil rights and for um, black liberation and for class justice. Very, very strongly um, motivated by Marxist and um, also kind of like Maoist um, um, ideology. Um, on this issue of the, um, of the suppression of the individual, um, basically, of course, this is one of the main things that at a very kind of um, scholastic level that people um, level against socialists, that we seek to control people and all these types of things. We would actually say that um, capitalism is a system which places um, a lot of control, which places control on individuals and actually suppresses um, humanity and within that suppresses individuals in terms of their um, in terms of their um, in terms of their potential. Um, there's a there's a subjective side to this and an objective side to this. So um, this the more subjective side is around the alienation um, um, alienation under capitalism. And this kind of operates at a number of levels. The first kind of level is, I mean, if it operates at a number of levels, but the first, the first kind of stage of this is the separation of um, workers from what they produce. And kind of the final stage of this is a, you know, alienation um, from each other, which affects all kind of, all, all, all social classes. The more objective limitations are things like hours of work. Um, people, you know, I think this, this is especially so um, some, somewhere like New Zealand. Um, the trend is changing now, but you know, uh, uh, maybe four or five years ago, um, within the OECD, we were we had more per, pe more people working 50, 60, 70 hours than any other country within the OECD, um, spare Japan. So um, the, these hours of work, things like this, which the capitalist class impose on workers, is something which really, um, which really um, impacts on the ability of, um, of individuals to develop. Um, we seek to promote the full development of the individual, and um, to be able to get the full development of the individual, um, equality is a um, pre precondition. We stand for the removal of um, capitalist exchange. Um, two of the major aspects of this, and this ties in again with the question of alienation, is you know that Marxists identify two types of value: exchange value and and and, and use value. So a thing has a has a value um, in it. So its use value of, of our chair here is that we can sit on it. The exchange value is the um, labour embodied in it and what it can be exchanged for. And what happens under capitalism is that our labour actually becomes an exchange value rather than a, rather than a use value. Um, so um, our our, our labour, which is a large portion of our lives, is um, is commodified. So we become um, we com we become commodified. So instead of um, you know being a human um, to be a human, that would be the use value of being a human. We we're, we are um, commodified. So that uh, that the um, exchange value is, domin is dominant and that we exchange labour. Um, and, and also this affects our relationship between other people. So the main social relationship is that within, whether it's within productive labour or, you know, within, um, or, or um, our main relationship with other people is producing or exchanging or circulating um, commodities. Um, we stand for the breaking down of the division of labour and so this is something that very much affects people's um, capacity to be individuals or de you know develop um, freely. Um, so basically within capitalist society um, you know there's a, there's a division of labour at you know, your workplace level so that you'll be putting this screw here or you know whatever it is instead of this screw here. But also there's a um, wider division of labour between mental and manual 